Do you think that being an employee and being an entrepreneur have a different mindset? Like, is a different mindset required to win and thrive at both of those? Now, let's talk about it today in today's episode. Now, I am Coach Kelly J, and I have been in the workforce as an employee two decades of my life. And I was a, and I've been an entrepreneur for one, a little over one decade of my life. That makes me super old, y'all. Does that mean I've been in the workforce for 30 years? Crazy. I'll be 51 next month. So I guess it does. And I want to share from my perspective, I do think a, a an employee mindset and an entrepreneur mindset are completely different. And if you are someone who is an employee right now and you're thinking about becoming an entrepreneur or you've just become an entrepreneur or you're a young entrepreneur or you have a side hobby and you're trying to go into entrepreneurship full time, you need these tips. And these are from my shoes, my perspective of two decades as an employee, a government employee at that, which is a whole nother a whole nother episode, a whole nother situation, and 11 years next month as an entrepreneur. So let's talk about it. Number one, the number one mindset difference is that I had to learn to embrace risk. As an employee, I was not, I was not a risk taker. I didn't have to be. As an employee, everything, all the, the risk is done for you. It, by the time it gets to you, you are the doer of the thing. Even if you are a, a supervisor, a boss, whatever you want to call it, in your work, there is always somebody that's going to be ahead of you, above you, um, especially in the government. Like there, I'm not, I'm not taking a risk at my level. That's not my, it's not my, my position to determine, are we going to do this? Are we going to do that? In regards to risk, that was at the government level. When I stepped into entrepreneurship, whoa, was it a, was it, it was a whole situation. It was a whole thing because I had not developed that muscle as an adult. Like that's a whole situation. You guys, it, you have to develop the risk taking muscle. Now my husband, AJ, who has been an entrepreneur for as long as I've known him, I would watch him as an employee for my shoes. And I'd say, oh my gosh, you're going to spend that much money on that program, or you're going to spend that much money going to that, that class, you have to get there. You have to pay for your plane ticket, your hotel, you have to pay for food. Like, and you don't even know if you're going to make money from that thing. I understand now that the bigger, the risk, the bigger, the reward, but that is a muscle I absolutely had to grow. So risk-taking the mindset of an employee is completely different when it comes to taking risks as it is as an entrepreneur. Number two, I had to learn to think more creatively. Now, again, as an employee, you are basically carrying out the mission of the, the organization, of the department, of the agency, to where as, as an entrepreneur, you're, yes, you're carrying out the mission. However, the mission is your mission. So you are, you're like married to that mission. You get it. It grew in your heart and in your being. Maybe it, maybe it is your, your gift. I mean, I would hope so if you're working in it full time as an entrepreneur, I would hope that it's your gift and spend the time doing it, but it's, it's, it's different. It, you have to turn on a different level of creativity as an entrepreneur. And because you have to say, if you, if you come up with an idea for something, say I come up with an idea for something and I give it to my team, this is my vision. This is what we're going to do. And it's their position to carry it out. If it doesn't work, then I have to, I have to think, how can I creatively move this and this to make it work? Or do I have to move this and this and do those things cost? You know, that's a that's another situation too. So I had to turn up the the notch on my creativity and not depend on someone else to tell me what to do, and then I just go do it. That's completely different than the workplace, guys. Number three. Oh, this is a big one. This is a big one. 
and and that's that I had in in entrepreneurship, you you're not passing the book. You have to learn that you it is your role as the owner of the brand to take ownership. That's number three. Take ownership of of the whole mission. If something goes wrong in your brand, you have to take ownership because you make the decisions for that for that business, for that brand to push it forward. If no matter how big or small, at the end of the day, even if you have employees, at the end of the day, you hire those employees. At the end of the day, if an employee is messing up, maybe they weren't trained right. At the end of the day, if the garbage doesn't go out, that's your fault too, because you should have had, had an SOP, uh, standard operating procedure in place to make that happen. So entrepreneurship is the absolute ultimate ownership that you must take. Biggie. Um, number four, resilience. I had to learn and grow the muscle of resilience. I had to learn how to let situations that come as an entrepreneur, I had to let them be more, I had to build a harder outer shell. You could call it resilience. You could call it, resilience is a pretty way, to, pretty thing to call it. But it's really, you have to grow tougher skin because you're navigating as an entrepreneur, you're navigating in waters that can just do anything. They can swallow you up or you can learn how to swim. And so that resilience muscle is what I'm talking about in learning in learning how to swim. That took me a while to do that because I I came up with the brand. And so when you when you create a brand, it's like creating it's like it's like a baby. And so anytime someone has something negative to say, um, if something goes wrong, you I, for me, I'll speak for me. I in the beginning I would take it personally. I would literally lose sleep over if somebody sent an email and they didn't like something I did or something I said. Now it's like I understand at the numbers that the numbers that we're doing, meaning how many people we bring into our business to help them grow their business. There's no way under the sun that every single person is going to be happy. But it took me a while to learn that. I don't even want to say skill set. What would it be called? I'll call it a muscle. I, it took me a while to build that muscle to understand that I have to be more resilient because if it affects me emotionally, the way it, if it affects me emotionally deeply, the way it once did, I would have been taken out. I wouldn't be going into my into my um, 11th, is it 11th year as an entrepreneur? Well, not 11 years as an entrepreneur. I'm at 12 years, 12, 13 years as an entrepreneur. But um, but I didn't leave the government. I left the government 11 years ago. So there was, there was a two-year crossover where I had started. It had taken off, but I still did not yet have the courage to leave. That's a whole nother episode. I mean, it really is because... Let's sit there for a minute. Oh, we don't have time to sit there for a minute because I only want my videos to be 10 minutes. So you tap in every day. And right now we're at, we have about a minute and 15 seconds to get to number five. So I'll have to visit that on another episode. So number five, I had to foster a growth mindset. This one is big too. And I'm going to tell you why. As an employee, especially in the government, I do, I know I continuously, you know, kind of redefine just working somewhere and working at the government. The government is a whole different mentality because there's so many rules that were that are in place that were put in place forever. And you can't just you can't just overturn those things. It's dictated and mandated by Washington, D.C. So it's different than working just, you know, a regular corporate job. So and there's 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 a growth mindset and there's a fixed mindset. And a lot of ways in the government, the the mentality as a whole is fixed. And so I didn't realize until I came out of that environment how stuck I was in a lot of ways. Real talk. 
just, I was so rigid and so regimented and so just not willing to move and bend in certain ways. And that is, that is not giving for an entrepreneur and in an entrepreneur environment. You have to be able to be more flow like water, like, like Bruce Lee, like flow like, I think that's who said that. Is that who said that? If it's not, my husband's gonna get me. Cause that's one of his, that's one of his uh, sayings, but I think it was Bruce Lee. Anyway, you have to be able to be more fluid as an entrepreneur. I had to build that muscle. These five things that I've shared with you guys today, it is, it is, they are muscles and, and ways that you have to be willing to lean in and change. I don't want to say who you are, but kind of, kind of change who you are or else the entrepreneur world will swallow you whole. And I don't want that for you. All right. So I'll see you guys in tomorrow's episode.